Key Issue 3, the last little bit on von Thunen's economic model. Students will be able to explain the model and its current application. So on the concept list, it is just von Thunen's model and its application. So the model is looking at agricultural land use um, based on von Thunen, who um, lived during the late 1700s into the 1850s, into 1850, and he developed this model based on economics in 1826. So it's an economic model, and it's based on two costs. One is the cost of the land. Where would you grow different crops or raise different animals based on the cost of the land and the cost of transporting that product, whether it's crops or animals, to the market. So this cost of transportation would definitely be influenced by the distance to the market. The longer the distance, the more costly it would be in transporting. The product weight, the heavier the product, the more cost it would to transport it to market. And also looking at the potential to spoil. If a product would spoil before it gets to market, then um, it can't be too far away. So that would influence the, the place um, where this crop or animals are produced based on um, being close enough to market and not spoiling. So basically looking at these two costs of where you would grow different crops or raise animals, the closer you are to the center of the town, the more valuable the land is. So the land is um, more expensive, so a higher land cost close to the center of the town would cause you to use the land a lot more intensively. So close to the center of town, the more costly the land is, higher rent because it's desirable, and you would have to use that land a lot more intensively to get as much out of the use of the land as possible, so closer to the city or the market center. The further away you are from the town, the more costly it is to transport your product to the town. So usually in um, areas further away from the town, you have an extensive use of the land. The land isn't so expensive, so it allows you to use the land extensively, not putting a lot of pressure on the land. Um, and then, so you have to basically balance, balance these two costs to get your best profit margin. So von Thunen's model um, was that at the center would be your market and right near the market, as close as possible in the ring closest to the market, would be dairy and horticultural products like things like fruit and vegetables, things that you would normally see in a market gardening um, or truck farming agriculture. It's important that these two are close to the market mostly because they would spoil if you had to go too far um, and also um, because of the non no refrigeration carts. I mean, this is 1826 when he put this model together, so there's no refrigeration. So you want to be close. So that means that in this area close to the market center, you will have to use this uh, land uh, very intensively to try to get the most out of it as possible. So the closest rings would be dairy and your fruits and vegetables. The ring just outside of the fruits and vegetables and dairy, you can see here, is the dark green, and that is the forest. Um, in 1800s, they didn't have electricity, and mostly the, the timber would be used for burning wood to heat their, um, heat their homes, also to cook their food, build their houses, and timber is very, very heavy. You cut the trees down, it would be very difficult and heavy and expensive to transport it. So it is important to have it fairly close um, because of the difficulty in transporting the timber close to the market. Just outside the timber, you're looking at crops. Crop rotation may be a mixture of crops with your animals, but this is 
um, uh, kind of, you know, extensive slash intensive use of the crops. It's not your fruits and vegetables that are going to spoil. The wheat and corn or, or whatever grains that you would grow further away from the market area is not going to spoil. So it can be a little bit further. But it's not too far away. Um, so, and, and, you know, a little bit lighter also to transport. So you've got basically your crops, your grain crops, crop rotation, use, and maybe even use of pasture lands too, possibly, mixed with your crop rotation. Maybe something like you see for mixed crop and livestock regimes, like we've talked about. Then outside of your mixed crop and livestock grazing, crop rotation and animals, is your grazing area for your animals. So this is basically looking at ranching. And ranching, this is mostly your animals, and they're walking around grazing. It's easy for them to transport themselves to the market. They don't need to be carried in a cart. They can walk. So transportation cost um, is minimal because, or, or nothing, because they are walking themselves to the market. And then actually beyond this grazing animal with your animals is an area that Von Thune would say is just unoccupied wilderness. It's too far from the city to have any kind of agricultural product being raised and um, it's you know outside of this little isolated community um, that has one center market and everything's based on the closeness of that market and the value, value um, of the land. Now, with all models, all models, they have to make some kind of assumptions. Models are just um, looking at something that happens and finding that there's patterns and trends. And people see these patterns and trends and come up with a model and say, well, it seems like most all the time things work this way. And they'll describe the model and give the descriptions of what the typical trends that can be um, you know, explained in this type of model, whatever the model is. So just like any model, von Thunen's model has some assumptions. Um, that were made that are not always necessarily true and even particularly today since this model was from 1826. So von Thunen's model was created before industrialization really. We really were a farming um, society in um, northern Europe. This was developed in Germany and then basically the developed nations during this time in, in Europe and also the United States. So he based these assumptions based on the time that he was living in. And he said that with all things considering, you know, the two costs that you would, where you would locate your agriculture production is based on, you know, the, the cost of the land and the cost of transportation. With that, he assumed that all the soil is all the same quality and all the climate is consistent throughout the entire land that he was talking about. Well, we know for a fact that soil quality can differ in different places. Some is more clay, some is more sandy, some, you know, more fertile than not. So uh, this is an assumption that, you know, that all the soil is the same quality and the climate is all consistent, which is not always going to be the case. But those are the assumptions that he makes. He also assumed that the land is completely flat. There's no rivers, there's no mountains, and it's flat, consistent, um, isotropic, isotropic meaning it's all the same, all, all consistent. Um, you know, this, if, if, it, if it was all the same, then maybe transportation would be, you know, consistently you know, equal cost depending on how far you are from the market. But if you have to cross a river or go over a mountain or go around a mountain, that's definitely going to affect your transportation cost. And it could affect, you know, the what you grow too because obviously rivers would provide water um, but you can't grow in the river and a mountain would make it very difficult to grow your crops. So land is completely flat with no rivers or mountains or any kind of physical barriers would be an assumption that he also made. 
He also assumed that as you transport your products from further away from the market to the market center, that you would go in a straight line to the market, kind of as the crow flies. But roads, we know, don't always go straight to the market. Sometimes they are meandering, going around rivers, going around mountains, and so forth. Going to, you know, in between people's property and not through their property. So we can't, so assuming a straight line to market is not always reasonable. He also assumed that the city, the, the market center, is located in the center of this quote-unquote isolated state. And it's not always going to be in the center. It might be, you know, to one side or the other. And he's also assuming that this little city is self-sufficient, that there's no external influences, no interactions with other communities. That is totally self-sufficient. It grows all the food it needs, and it grows food only for itself. So it's very isolated with the center market center and no interaction with other you know, communities, other countries, and so forth. He also assumed that farmers act only to maximize their profits, meaning they raise the products only to make money. And there might be other reasons why a farmer would raise a crop. Maybe they just like it more. Or, or whatnot. So he's just assuming that all farmers are acting on economics instead of maybe cultural reasons why they might raise a product. Um, also, influ also assume that there are no other factors that would influence what is grown, where grown, um, such as governmental regulations or policies. Today, government gets involved with what is grown and where. And so in the United States, we have things like subsidies, where government gives money to different farmers to raise or not raise crops. There might be taxes. So Von Zun is assuming that there's no governmental regulation or policies that would also influence where um, crops are grown. He also said that, you know, he assumed that this isolated state is surrounded by an unoccupied wilderness, which is like beyond the last ring. But as we know in the United States, a lot of communities, like a lot of cities, maybe like New York City or you know, any kind of a lot of cities along the East Coast, that communities bump up to each other. So there really is no unoccupied wilderness between some communities and other communities. It's all kind of a conglomeration. It all kind of mashes together. So these are things that are assumptions he made that are not necessarily true today um, or even true back then, too. So let's look at maybe how we can apply this model for today. And the question is, can it work since it is so old? So let's look at the United States. In, um, among some geographers, they feel that you really can use you know, the, the von Thunen's model fairly loosely to organize and describe where different agricultural products are grown in the United States. So you see this one um, visual, one diagram. If you assume that the New York City is the largest market area, and it is a very large city, very influential city, and you take that as your market center. Well, obviously it's not in the middle of the country, but we'll look at that. And we'll say around New York City, it's going to be mostly like market gardening areas, things, fruits and vegetables that we said need to live, be close to the city central because um, they are perishable and, uh, and so because of that reason too, the land is used intensively. And we do have commercial gardening and fruit farming along the east coast of the United States. So that does, that does work. And then the second ring, um, as seen here in, the United, in this diagram, it has dairy. And we know that dairy farming is, you know, in these areas of Pennsylvania and up into Vermont and upper state New York. And they are close to an urban area, which is important to dairy. And so it does make sense that dairy would be in the second ring. And then if you look in the third ring, this is kind of our mixed crop and livestock raising. We've got the corn belt here in Iowa. And so we've got a mixture of fattening livestock since 
mixed crop and livestock grazing is focusing on earning money with the livestock as you fatten them up with feeding them corn and soybeans. So it, it seems plausible to have this third ring of kind of mixed crop rotation with your animals together and, um, you know, fairly close to the central market. Then in the Great Plains where you have four, you have, we have a lot of wheat and that does make sense. It's grain. Um, it's a little bit easier to, um, you know, get that to market it's a little bit further away because it won't um, spoil. And so, yeah, that makes sense. This is our kind of our mixture of our crops, grain crops, and animals. So we kind of have all those two rings together. And then ring five is our livestock ranching, which was the, the furthest out ring, according to von Thunen. And we know this is a little bit drier, so we looked in um, at the activity that we were doing in the computer lab that in Colorado there is livestock raising that's kind of uh, open range and you know cowboys and things like that and it's a little bit dry and mountainous so it's not good for growing crops and then six would be kind of in our you know rocky mountains and we don't really have a lot of agriculture in this area and then if you look all the way over to California and a little bit into Arizona that is uh, definitely a lot of agriculture there, and that would be like a market area too. So, so you can say, you know, it does kind of relate to the United States. We can use it. Here's another one that looks at the, the model, and they would make the same assumption that New York, you know, that area would be your vegetables, your market. Um, and then you can see for A and B, you can read this. A assumes, again, that New York City is the only market, that crops are ranked by the rent, paying ability. The closer you are to New York City, the higher the cost of the land. And again, that there's no terrain or climatic variation, meaning it's all consistent, which we know is not always going to be true. And so you can look at these to look at these other thoughts about applying von Thunen's model today. So that is von Thunen's model, economic model of land use um, for agriculture based on the cost of uh, the land, closer to the market is more expensive, and the cost of transportation. The further you are from the market area, the more costly it is.